It is a new year, and as you've seen, all the videos that we've been putting out kind of skirt that line between just easy cooking, but also healthy cooking. So today we're gonna to be making three recipes, three desserts, using only three ingredients each. They're gonna be really quick and still very delicious. We're gonna start first with the absolutely healthiest of them all. All we need is a cup of mashed sweet potatoes. These sweet potatoes have been boiled with their skins on and then the skins are taken off to protect that meat and not get it too watery. They're then just mashed and then leveled out into one cup. To that, we're adding half a cup of melted peanut butter. You can use sugar-free peanut butter if you want a bit of sweetness. You can use kind of peanut butter that's like, I don't know, sweetened with honey or sugar alcohols or whatever your fancy is. But if you want to be really healthy, just use sugar-free peanut butter. And to that, we're going to be adding half a cup of cocoa powder. So literally, if you look at the ingredients, it's actually one of the healthiest things you can make. All we're doing is putting that all together. You can do it with a whisk, but it might be a little difficult or you might, be, you might need to be really strong or put it in the food processor, get it nice and crumbly. And because it's sweet potatoes, you can kind of form them then into a pan and then put that in the oven for about 15 minutes. It's basically cooked. All you're looking to do is kind of like compact everything together and get that peanut butter just melted throughout the whole mixture. Next one is one of my favorite recipes to make. It's a three ingredient, super soft and decadent and feels unhealthy chocolate cake. All we're doing is taking a whole stick of butter. This is probably like the most unhealthy part of it. We're melting that with a bunch of chocolates. We were using purely dark chocolate. If you wanna use semi-sweet chocolate, you can as well. And that option of adding artificial sweeteners is always there for you, or natural sweeteners like stevia and stuff. We're then taking about eight eggs, putting that into a mixer, blend them for about five minutes on a medium to high speed until they're really nice and frothy. All that then gets put together and mixed together. What we're making sure here is that the chocolate that we were melting on the double boiler with um, the butter isn't too hot because we don't want to cook the eggs when we mix everything together. You're pretty much done when you see that the mixture has one dark chocolate style color. You're then going to put that into a pan. What do you call those? Springform pan. You're going to put it into a springform pan. But before you do that, you wrap that springform pan in two layers of aluminum. This just makes sure that the water doesn't penetrate the chocolate because we're gonna be cooking it into a bain-marie. So all you're gonna do is take a larger pot, fill that with some boiling water until it reaches maybe halfway of the springform pan. That goes into the oven around 350 Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. Just poke it, poke it, poke it until you get a stick that comes out nice and clean. You could undercook this a little bit. The issue is because it's just eggs binding everything together, it might go all over the place. Finally, the most unhealthy one, we take one egg, we add a cup of sugar. I know it's a lot of sugar. There are other types of ingredients that you can use that are sugar replacements, but they need to have the same consistency as sugar. And in the Philippines, those are really hard to find, so I just opted to use white sugar. If you wanna use other variants, you can, just make sure it has a one-to-one -one ratio in baking um, that's very similar to a fine white sugar. The sugar and egg mixture is then blended with a huge heaping cup of peanut butter and this is all the fat and texture that will keep everything together so that these peanut butter cookies come out perfectly. You then roll them out into little balls. You can play around with the shape and form. Use a fork to kind of make dimples or whatever you want to do. If you're lazy, just use a scooper and just leave it in the scooper. Put that in 350 Fahrenheit for about 12 minutes for a chewy consistency. If you want it slightly crispier, leave it a bit longer. Time to thank the sponsors of this video. 2020 is your year. 2020 is the year where you let your creativity flourish and just get better at everything that you do, whether it's a hobby, a passion, or even your job. And Skillshare is the place to do it. If you haven't heard of it yet, it's an online learning community that offers memberships with meaning. With so much to explore and real projects to create and fellow creators to help you out, Skillshare is really the place that empowers you to grow. All the classes here are designed for real life so if you're super busy or if you're working if you're doing so many different things you can take these classes at your own pace whether they're short or long you can really just fit it in in your busy schedule and make it happen for yourself whether you're into videography photography 
editing, graphic design, filmmaking, all these different classes are available at your fingertips. It's also incredibly affordable if you compare it to face-to-face -to -face classes. If you take the annual membership, basically you're looking at paying less than $10 a month. Since it is the start of the year, one of the ones that I thought was really interesting was this class about real productivity and how to build habits that last. It's given by Thomas Frank, who's a popular YouTuber, and he basically just goes over all these different things in terms of how to be more productive, efficient, and how to set yourself up for success in 2020. So to help you out, and because Skillshare is so generous, if you click the link in the description box below, you'll be able to get two months free of their premium membership. And please, 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 each time I post this, people keep asking me for the link, so please do it now. It's really gonna help you out. All right, back to our sweet tooth. All right, so cake, 25 minutes, um, the brownie, about 15 minutes, and the cookies, about 12 minutes. And I think everything now is more or less ready. That's why I started with the one that took the longest and then moved my way down to the one that took the shortest amount of time to cook. So the brownie, because of the starch, which is mainly the sweet potatoes, you don't really need to rest it much. You can actually go ahead and just take it out. So let's section it. This part's always a little tricky. So brownies are done. We're gonna take the chocolate out from the bain-marie that we have going here. And this one, I'm gonna let rest a little bit to make sure that when I take it out, it doesn't kind of go all over the place. Well, I'm kind of just praying that it won't. Finally, the cookies. Just like with any cookies, you wanna rest these a little bit so that they harden nicely. So double foiling it was super key to make sure that none of the water kind of goes into the springform pan, but also at the same time, we don't want the chocolate cake kind of melting outside the springform. So usually when you use liquids in springform, you always run that risk. So this kind of just makes sure it doesn't happen. Cake is done. Texturally, you'll see it's a little bouncy. So what I wanted this to kind of happen is when I cut it, that center should be perfectly gooey, which is exactly what we're looking for. So that jiggle is actually a good sign. But then I did poke it. I like to poke things. I did poke it a couple times to check and the bamboo stick did run clear. So it's unsure how like moist it's inside, but given kind of how the shape is moving, it's a good sign. And finally, our cookies. Time for my favorite part, and that is the tasting. We're gonna start with the chocolate cake because it looks insane. It's super moist and kind of like perfectly soft in the inside. Look at that. A little, little bit of smoke sexiness action happening for you. Flourless chocolate cake for me always makes sense because you don't get that cakey texture, you really just get softness. And you'd think because there's so many eggs and it's just chocolate, that it would taste like eggs, but it really does not taste like eggs at all. So good, that's one recipe to keep in your back pocket for sure. Cookies, so now they've hardened nicely. Break that for you. Still nice and moist inside. If you want it crispier, just cook it a bit longer because that fat from that peanut butter will help get it crispy. These are nice and chewy, exactly how I like them. I mean, this is probably the most decadent one out of all of them because it has sugar. All the other ones, as you notice, don't have any sugar. Um, but what I like about this recipe is just the simplicity of it. Even though it's slightly, slightly unhealthy, it'll still get you in and out of the kitchen really quickly. And then finally, the brownie. This is the healthiest of the healthiest out of all of these because literally it's just sweet potatoes um, and some chocolate powder. So you see, it holds this shape nicely. It looks like a brownie. It won't taste exactly like a brownie, but because it's sweet potato, it's super moist. If you want to sweeten this, you can with like stevia, sugar alcohol, really up to you. So that was it. Three recipes, three ingredients each, except for one where we kind of added a little bit of flavor in the peanuts with some vanilla um, and a little bit of salt just to kind of make it a bit more palatable and a bit more tasty. But three ingredient recipes, really simple. Everything was prepared within 15 minutes and then cooked within 25 minutes. So you have zero excuse to make either healthy desserts or to just start cooking this year. Peace out.